Yo, what up, bro? It's your boy, Mad Science. And if you are in the Galveston County area, make sure y'all hit up the Galveston Mail Room at 272461st Street, where they take care of all your mailing needs. They got a notary, package drop off, private mailboxes, rentals with 24 hour access, custom packaging. They got greeting cards, man. Hours of operation on Monday through Friday, uh, 9 o'clock through 4 30. Saturday, come through between 9 and 1 o'clock. And that's what's good with it. Also, they got the center room by Miss Cheryl Cardwell. Candle extraordinaire. Make sure y'all come through and get some center candles handmade. And this is New Nation Radio. Yeah. Leaving all the competition in the dust. familiar with Dr. Valentine. He is a hygienic scientist. He is a naturopath. He's a metaphysician. He's a clinical hypotherapist. He's a lecturer. He is the founder, director, and pastor of the Temple of the Healing Spirit, Self-Healing Educational Center, the Institute for self Master, and just recently, the University of Comedic Science. He's a certified member of the International Association of Counselors and Therapists. For five years, Dr. Valentine served as co-director of the Heal Thyself Natural Living Educational Center in Brooklyn and helped create it, format, refine, and teach the 21-day therapeutic fasting, juice fasting program. And uh, I'm going to pull um, Dr. Valentine up so we can get started, so we can hear this uh, very interesting and fascinating information. Dr. Valentine, are you there? Yes, I am. Well, thank you uh, for joining us tonight. And um, what is before we get started, can you tell the people uh, where they can reach you at as far as your school is concerned? Well, they can call 1-800, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 847-1291. Again, 847-1291. 8-1-800. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you also have some classes that uh, will be coming up in February, correct? That's correct. We'll be teaching metaphysical psychology and uh, also for those who wish to deal with uh, classical naturopathy. Uh, we teach uh, a course in, met in classical naturopathy as well uh, based in the hygienic sciences. And we teach the metunecha which is the ancient language of the, uh, the Chemites, uh, who, what we see on the walls and, and the papyri, uh, well, my wife and one of the top linguists in the country, Dr. Raketi Amen, she is also on our, uh, on our dais, on our faculty. And uh, that will be starting, I believe, in the first week of February. I'm not mistaken, but uh, if you do want more information on that, you can go up to UKSNOW. That's U as in United, K as in King, S as in Science, and then NOW.org. And when you get up there, just underneath the banner, you'll see the word courses. Just click the courses uh, link, and <clears throat> excuse me, that will take you right in and give you a full explanation of our courses and the date and times it starts. If you are interested, of course, in joining, then to call that number 800-847-1291, and uh, we will get you, uh, I mean, you leave your number and every information that you have, and uh, we'll get right back to you. Great, great. Now, uh, tonight you are going to talk about this new galaxy and new solar system. What is that about? Well, um, it's, it's not, uh, I'm not sure the uh, specific uh, understanding of it. 
we are entering into uh, our galaxy and our solar system is traveling. There's nothing that's standing still. So what is uh, what we are doing is we are traveling in a gigantic circle. Just imagine that there are countless numbers of universes and solar systems in a in a carousel of light that is going around in a specific circle and this carousel of light takes about 144,000 years or so to fully <clears throat> for our universe and our <clears throat> not our universe but our galaxy and our solar system to actually travel around this our ancestors the Timon Khan Olmec, who are now being uh, seen as the Mayans, uh, put down information in their Mayan codex about these visitations and the cycles it takes for us to get from one point in this cycle, in this big carousel, to another. At this point, uh, we have reached the end of a specific consciousness time that our galaxy is about to enter into a familiar galaxy with our ancestors. They knew where we were going because you can't know what the end of time is or what the end of a specific consciousness cycle is unless you've gone through it a couple of times. So how do you know something has ended unless you've known something began so that it had an ending and that you had been following its course a few times? So imagine now that... Everything that you thought was relevant around time, everything you thought about that was relevant around the beginning of man, everything you thought that was relevant about history and uh, what it is that you've been taught about the beginning of the universe and all this, just completely take that out of your mind. Everything that we should know beginning with uh, humanity, is that <clears throat> there was never a time that the human species or what we call the template of man was not. In other words, as creation began or as creation existed, as all things existed, man was always there at the beginning. Man was always a, a seed of consciousness from the very beginning of all beginnings if there was such a thing as beginning. So there was never a time that man the prototype, the type, the, the, the architectural structure or the spiritual seed that became man, that was always. It is forever. It is eternal. There will never be a time that man is not, and there never was a time that man was not. So we are now in a cycle in that progression of humanity, and we are about to go through different galaxies and different um, uh, solar substructures of the galaxy and all throughout this universe we are going to be meeting up with other types or other entities that are on this carousel. Now here's what I'm going to, I'm going to give you a picture. You remember those uh, merry-go-rounds we used to be on when we were kids? You used to want to get on the horse or you would end up getting on the, uh, you know, on one of these other animals or on the rides. And you've always noticed that one of the <clears throat> one of the carousels or one of the animals always just to seem like it's going faster than the other. You all are going around in the same circle, but one of the animals seem to be moving faster than the other. The other one looks a little slower. Well, that's who we are. Just imagine our solar system as that. We are traveling around this gigantic carousel of light, and we are meeting up going into the other neighborhoods or neighborhoods that our ancestors have visited. And now with that interaction, we are now coming into, and you'll notice that um, NASA is constantly saying, oh, we found a new planet, or there's a new star system, or there's a new... No, you're not finding anything. We are passing into neighborhoods and territories, uh, galactic territories, solar territories, that our ancestors have visited before, but because the Europeans themselves have not, were not around at that time, they're now digging up all the evidence of our ancestors' experience with this. 
So we are coming into the neighborhoods that our ancestors once visited and put down and talked about them, the visitations of the gods or the interactions with the Nephilim and the, and the Nibiru and uh, Anunnaki and all whatever they name these people or these entities. We are now coming into conjunction and we are seeing them. Uh, NASA is picking them up all over uh, outside of our world. They're putting up a whole lot of chemtrails to cover the fact that they're up there. Uh, everything is happening. They've, they've shut down the, um, the shuttle program, and they're creating a whole new type of private interstellar uh, spacecraft that can go up and do battle with these entities uh, so that they could defend. Uh, they have all kind of Tesla technologies. We're getting ready to go into an incredible new world. And during this time of the year, you see 2012, you're going to be seeing stepped-up visitations from all types of entities that will be coming into or we will be going into their neighborhood and they will be visiting our planet. We'll be seeing more of these ships. So I will say to you, brothers and sisters who are in the sound of my voice, get your camcorders ready. Get your, get your iPods or whatever it is that you take pictures with and that you take um, uh, video cameras with because you're going to be seeing them regularly from now on. So I just wanted to clarify that we are traveling on this carousel or in this carousel of light, and we're going to be meeting up with a whole lot of different life forms and entities that our ancestors once had interaction and, and, and uh, uh, cultural intercourse with, and uh, it's going to be an exciting time. Now, you said that um, our ancestors uh, met these entities millions of uh, eon years ago. Have some of those entities stayed on the planet from way back then, or are, or how is that working? That's a good question. Yes, they have. They've, they've stayed on the planet. They've even interfaced with humanity. Uh, some of them did not interface with humanity, and you would see them in the oceans, especially in the Pacific Rim, which is in the deepest part of our of our Earth. <clears throat> um, the Pacific Rim goes five miles down underwater, and it's only since we've begun to develop the technology to go five miles down, just imagine the pressure of five miles of water on top of you. Only now have we been able to get the technologies to go five miles down into the Pacific Ocean, and with that, discover whole new species, but also disturb the sanctuary of a lot of these entities who have actually made their homes in this world and essentially have been visiting or at least coming to the surface. Uh, now we are disturbing. The more technologically advanced we become, the more we disturb uh, areas of sanctuary that once belonged to them. So, yes, they've been here. And uh, the moon is an example of, um, one of the sanctuaries that these entities have been hiding out in. Hmm. Now, you say that we are going uh, uh, to another side. Now, uh, you, are you talking about like we're going into a whole solar system, a whole galaxy? Um, I, I saw a picture. Is it like the, the figure eight or is we just oh, going uh -huh. around? Yeah, I see what you're saying. No, what it is is that all of what we have been made to believe that science has told us was uh, the, it was the, I guess, the personality or the idiosyncrasies that made up our solar system. Um, we, we, I, don't, I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of our solar system. They show you the sun in the center, and then they take pictures of all of the planets, the, the, the first seven planets, and now it goes up into ten planets. And then they seem to draw this concentric circle around the sun, giving you the impression that these planets are circling around the sun. <laughs> Excuse me. It's interesting because that being the case, um, it's been interesting if the sun is, and, and again, this is something that has always puzzled me, if the sun is standing still, is, is the sun standing still and are we circling it? Is the, sun, is the sun staying one place? And if so, how is it staying one place 
in a universe that is in constant motion because that's exactly what the sciences say, that everything is based on motion. Now we come to find out that the sun is actually moving at a rate of something like 42,000 or 43,000 miles an hour. Now, if the sun, with its gravitational influence, is traveling through space at a speed of 43,000 miles an hour, how is it that the Earth, which is infinitesimal compared to the size of the sun, if the sun is moving at 43,000 miles, how is it that the, that the Earth, with its size and girth, is actually circling the sun? It doesn't make sense because something of that magnitude, like the sun with the gravitational influence, could not allow for the Earth to spin around it unless there was some kind of, of electromagnetic force where there was some kind of repulsive energy. But they're telling you that that repulsive energy and that attractive energy, gravitational and repulsive energies, can only happen and keep you in a concentric or focus or orbit if the sun is giving off the same amount of energy at the same time and standing still and maintaining a specific center for that occurrence to happen, for that to be occurring. It doesn't happen that way. What I'm saying is, and what is now being said by a lot of people, and what has been said for years by a lot of scientists but have been refuted and rebunked and debunked, is the fact that the sun is moving at a certain speed and that we are actually being dragged behind the sun. But the sun's wake is somehow creating a, 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 a geocentric, if you want to call it, or a ellipsis that takes the shape of a figure eight, which is why the symbol of infinity was so sacred to our ancestors. So the sun is pulling us, and as it's pulling our planet, the planet in, its, in the wake of the sun is designing a specific orbit that looks like the figure eight as it is being dragged. And the seasons that we are getting is based upon where we are at one point or another on that figure eight. The other planets are actually doing their own form around that same figure eight. It's, it's, it sounds crazy, and it's very, very elegant. But to try to figure out how it's done, it is very difficult. So to say that the sun is standing still while we're spinning around it, that has to be rethought. And that's what that figure eight comes from. Mm, okay. So that's something like when they told us that the world was flat. There you go. Okay. Okay. Now, you say that they're ready to uh, go to do battle. I mean, why is it that it has to be a battle? I mean, uh, are they... Uh, yeah, are they you have to remember that there are forces that have been using, that have been acting as parasites on our planet for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Forces that go back thousands of years that have been parasiting on not only the life's blood of the human species, but the life energy of the, of the human species. And the, there is a system of governance in place that has been responsible for locking down the evolutionary consciousness of the human species. The human species, as it was told a long time ago, has something like 75 or 89 or 90 different genetic species imprints within its DNA. And, this, and these genetic uh, imprints uh, in the DNA are from all these different forms of life that are in this carousel of light. And what has happened is that whoever knows or whatever has happened to us during the great battle and the fall and our losing grace or being fallen from our own grace, or which is really the knowledge of ourselves, we have now been stuck in our evolutionary cycle so that the body that we have is now obsolete for the time that we need to be occupying. The body that we have is, is temporary, but it is, is breaking down in diseases faster than ever before, even though we're finding ways to extend its life 
the type of body that we need for the new consciousness is not this body. A whole other kind of body must be resurrected from this particular type of body, and we are not being allowed to do that because of the types of food they're giving us, the poisoning of the air, the poisoning of the water. Everything is to destabilize the genetics from picking up the light code information broadcasting to this planet and from picking up the information that is contained in the foods that we are supposed to eat, like the pure organic fruits and vegetables, which contain information that is supposed to be downloaded into our data bank, into our cellular data bank, to give information that the planet itself would have been picking up from light codes beaming in from different sun, sun systems. This is information. Light is information. And when it hits our planet and is filtered through the outer, the outer halo, it then becomes qualified information for the species to evolve. And the, and the part of that information transference takes place in the proper food that we eat because the DNA in the food and the molecules and all the life energies and enzymes are actually active principles of knowledge that are supposed to be encoded when we take that food in and it now begins to triangulate and speak to and interface with our DNA so that our DNA now has information on what to do and then we now factor that by, by, by occupying ourselves with the proper thoughts and the proper actions for us to evolve. That's being stopped. Mm. So uh, for those that do uh, eat the proper foods and, um, you know, go to a certain conscious level, will, they will be able to communicate with the uh, other species? Well, they will be able to communicate first with the species they've lost communication with, and that's the ones that we used to speak to regularly right here on our own planet. Mm -hmm. The funny part about it is that there are a lot of species on this planet was transported from other planets in order to repopulate this planet after there was the great destruction uh, when it was hit by not only a meteor, uh, but by comet, but also uh, the great um, uh, atomic wars that were fought by our progenitor ancestors tens and hundreds of thousands of years ago. So there was a re planting or a supplanting of, of life forms and species from other planets to this planet as well. Mm. Now, um, so if, if we got all of these mixtures of uh, species, is this partially why there is so much conflict? Or it seems like that there is this a certain group that is in the ruling and they are controlling the masses of species that's on this planet. That's the truth. You're right. And if you notice, they're doing their best to barcode every living species on this planet. I'm talking from microbes all the way up to humans. Hmm. They're putting a barcode on every form of life so that they can own it. Remember, once you name it, you own it. And that's why they changed your name, and that's why you see them putting all kinds of different Latin names to these different species and phyla. This is the way that they take, they come to claim the, uh, the, the, every form of genetic life form, every genetic life form they're going to brand and copy, and they're going to have a copyright on. That is why they have been copywriting your food, copywriting your seeds, they're copywriting human DNA. They're even changing human DNA so that they could create a kind of human that they can copyright and say is their own. Mm. They're already terraforming. They've already gone and sent um, satellites that you don't know about into other planets like the Europa moon to see what type of life form can live there. And they've come back with data of what the atmosphere is like and what the, vegeta the, the vegetables or what the plant life would be like and what the animal life would be like. And if the atmosphere is a specific type of, of, of um, atmosphere, that they're going to be genetically engineering the human to breathe that particular atmosphere. Hmm. 
Now, someone in the uh, chat room is asking um, if these new events uh, will block our ascending to the fifth dimension, what they're doing. They're trying. They can't. They cannot stop it. They can delay it, but they cannot stop it. The thing is, your own preparation and the focus that you put your attention in. Remember, the thing that's most important to them is your attention. That's why you pay attention. That is the most valuable thing you have because that's the access point to who you are. Your attention is what your observer puts its light of observation on so that it can learn, so that it can interface with what it is, uh, is accessing as information. If you allow yourself to interact with them and then come into a place of fear, especially fear, then you will become susceptible to what it is that they are doing and you will find yourself giving importance and therefore empowering them. Your fear empowers them. You have to now create a condition within yourself that you recognize these weak points that they've created in you and learn how to delete those weak points. Usually it's based on judgment of self. I'm not good enough. I don't think I can. Uh, I might. I wish I can. I want to. This is the language of failure. And if you continue to speak like that, if you continue to cast or at least project your weakness as somebody else's fault or the things that you're not getting as somebody else's fault, then that victim mode that you're in is going to be what the universe responds to. And you have this, uh, you have this uh, thought pattern, this loop that they call a data stream, a karmic data stream, and it is constantly being replayed and being reflected back to you because what your subconscious is constantly replaying is what the universe is feeding back to you. Mm. So unless you delete all of what you have been given in your files and subconsciously have, have, have in, embedded into your files, how, how I don't, I can't have this, I don't have this, I wish I could, I want to, I need, that's another big word. Once you do that, then the language and the meaning attached to the language is what the universe reflects back to you. So they know what language does and how it manipulates you and your spirit and your being to act not only consciously but subconsciously as a slave. And they keep feeding it to you, telling you how you eat your underarms don't smell right, or ladies, when you're having your cycle, are you odor-free and all this kind of nonsense. So you're constantly worrying about yourself, always thinking about yourself as not being good enough, your nails are not good enough, and our, our sisters are spending to the tune of 5 to $10 billion, $20 billion a year, on artificial hair, on nails that are poisonous, all this stuff, all this money is going into them making you believe that you are deficient. And this is how they help keep the lockdown in place because unless you realize and with your real eyes, well, let me say it again, unless you realize with your real eyes that you can see beyond the illusion that that is not you in the mirror, that is just an outer shell. It is who it is that's observing that mirror and what's in that mirror that's the real thing. And you have to get back into access with that and understand the science of how that works, and that's what we teach at our university. And, again, uh, you're going to have classes uh, coming this February. That's uh, correct. At your university. And, and what are some of your classes and what are um, the website? What is the website? The website, again, is UKSNOW.org, and it is to the University of Commission Sciences. And at this moment, we have three courses that we're teaching because we have a shortage of faculty. It's, it's very, very hard to do what we're doing. 
but we are going to be expanding and growing, and we have uh, plans for building the university as an actual structure. Right now it's a cyber university, but we, are, we have plans and um, specs in place to actually put down foundations, but that again is in the future. Uh, we teach metaphysical psychology, which is exactly what we were talking about, the examination of consciousness and how it works either for you or against you, and how those who are in what we call the parasitic elite, how they have learned how the mind works and what they do to manipulate your mind in order to maintain you in their light code lockdown. We also teach, we also, we, well, we recommend the metaphysical psychology first before any of the other courses because of what it does to change the mental pattern that we have been accustomed to so that it opens us up to learn the other subjects, which is hygienic science, um, uh, classical naturopathy, and the meta nature. Okay. Now, also, uh, someone wants to know uh, the extraterrestrials. Will that were they? Will they have stage events? Uh, you know, acting like we have visitations when we really don't, or will it be real? How will we know what's real and what's not? Because they seem to be master in illusions. Yes, very good question. Um, I want to make the people aware of the fact that um, what better way to bring us into the new world order than to stage an alien landing that will be orchestrated by the government and with Steven Spielberg doing the special effects. Now, let me just say this. They have been developing some incredible technology based on holograms. And they've been doing this over the last 15 to 20 years. And they have become incredibly powerful with it. Now, look at this. I want you to understand that things happen and you get, you, if you know what to look for in the news, and if you, you need to, if you know how to uh, read the, the, uh, the events of the time, you will know what the parasitic elite are doing and what they are planning. Now, when I investigated holography, I, I went into where they actually did, uh, where they actually filed the schematics for those who invented certain technologies, and then they would have to file it, and then you can go into where they filed the schematics, and you can go and look at the schematics and actually see what the schematic says the technology does. Well, when I went in to investigate holograms, and this was a while back, I found that in order for the hologram to work its best, to get the best effect, so that you get the best uh, image, the realist image, the most three-dimensionally concise and full image of a hologram, is to make sure that the atmosphere that you're projecting the light into has barium in it. The barium must then be mixed with a certain amount of radioactive isotope for it to get a clear vision of uh, this hologram to make it look like somebody is actually standing in the room. But what you want to do is to project it on a cloud or in a dark night or a night sky. To do that, there must be an environment. In other words, if you went to the movies, you couldn't just project the movie onto the curtains. You have to open it up and have the proper screen for you to project the, the, the picture onto to get the full effect. Well, to get the full effect of a hologram, especially the type of hologram that they want to project and the type of protocol they want for a specific mission called Operation Blue Beam, what you find is when you look up for the, the specs on holograms, you find that barium is one of the key mixtures necessary for it to take place and radioactivity. Well, where do we see these two components now and how is it that these two components have now become 
accessible as well as saturating our environment. Well, the barium is one of the primary mixtures in your, guess what, family? In your chemtrails. Mm. are saturating your ba- with barium. Then, all of a sudden, Fukushima blows up. And the entire atmosphere is now saturated with radioactivity. Now we're going to be seeing all kinds of spaceships. But are they real or are they Memorex? Mm -hmm. This is the game that the government, who is using their own forms of technology to circumvent the real interface with those are off in the Galactic Confederation, This is the kind of thing that we have to be mindful of, and this is how we have to be clear in our minds. They want to poison and kill at least 4 billion people from this planet. They want to wipe people out because they have a whole new utopic new world order that is in place. You saw what Obama did when he signed this new National Defense Act. This is nothing more than a CEO of a corporation which is called the United States, he is now upgrading the 1863 War Powers Act that Lincoln put into place when the Civil War was um, being prosecuted. Lincoln put that into place because the whole of the Congress went synodai. That synodai means that there is without a day. In other words, every state that was part of the Constitution didn't have a date to adjourn, therefore there was no more government. This is why he put the War Powers Act in, in order to be able to maintain the Union, since the South had seceded from the Union. So that act has never, ever been rescinded. And every president since then has been using that to create a dictatorial uh, relationship with all the corporations which is what we're getting ready to turn into. Uh, There's going to be this force and this fight between communistic socialism and corporate fascism, which is going to be what we're going to see between Ron Paul, uh, which is corporate, um, which is kind of a fundamental uh, Republican fascism versus a communistic socialism, which is what we're going to be feeling with uh, Obama. Mm Yeah. So, wow. So the chemtrail is the barren and the radioactive. So when they project the 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 aliens, the spaceships, right? Exactly. So what you're looking at right now is a kind a concentricity or kind of a synchronicity and a convergence of how they're playing the game and getting us ready for this 2012. Because remember, we're dealing with apocalyptic madmen. And they believe that the only way for their savior, which essentially is just their own uh, bloodletting religious form of, you know, their God is about a blood God. It's about sacrificing children, Mulak. You see, the owl is their God. So what you're looking at is every sign that all of these companies, if you look at other companies, well, it is a company, all of the countries, if you noticed, all of the uh, uh, countries that are the industrial super giants, all of them have predators, predators as their symbols. Mm. So you have what is the symbol of the United States? The eagle. Right. What was the symbol of Nazi Germany? Um. The eagle. Mm. What was the symbol of South Africa? The eagle. Hmm. So, what is the other symbols of another? What was the symbol of the British? The lion. Remember, when you're dealing with a predator, you're not dealing with someone who is a provider, one who promotes life. You're dealing with an opportunist that parasites off of life. Now, no matter how beautiful and bold the lion looks, or no matter how beautiful and wonderful the eagle looks in its, in its majesty, it's a parasite. It lives off of others. If there is nothing for it to parasite or to predate, it predates on itself. 
Whereas our ancestors, the ancient Kemites, one of our main and most powerful symbol was the humble honeybee. Why? Because the honeybee provides not only for itself when it goes from flower to flower, but it provides for the rest of all the life forms that eat the foods that it provides for everybody by doing what it does. So there's a difference between a provider and a parasite. And we are under the auspices of a predacious parasite who takes what he wants based on opportunism. That's what capitalism is. So the whole mentality is what needs this is this is an entire mentality that has grown over the last uh, I would say fifteen hundred years since the Catholic Church uh, began to write the intercateras that told the kings of Europe that they could go ahead and rape uh, rape, pillage, and rob in the name of Jesus Christ. Wow. That's deep, uh, Dr. Phil. Now, someone in the chat room is saying that uh, it seems like time is speeding up. So it, it, if it is, I mean, do we speed up or do we do the opposite? That's interesting. Uh, time is an element Okay. Mm-hmm. Time is the provider of all of what we see as physical life. All life has stages of expression. It goes from time, space. Um, let me see. There's time, space, uh, sound, light, fire, air, air, fire, water, and earth. These are the principles of how time folds itself into being. Time is an element. It's what sets the precedent for life to become on the material realm. Without time, there is no material expression of life. All material expression of life lives based upon a time signature that time provides for it to exist. So time seems to be speeding up only because your consciousness is stuck in the old paradigm that essentially makes you believe that the body that you have and the sensual expressions that it gives you, the lust it has, the hungers, the the, the different types of thirsts and all this, this is what makes you believe that time is speeding up. It's because your mind is not keeping up with the consciousness dictates that is supposed to be happening. Time seems to be speeding up only to those who are not interfaced with the time that the universe is in. Right now, the kind of food you're eating, the kind of things that you're thinking about, the kind of uh, temporal, very uh, low energy material gain and fear keeps you believing that time is outpacing you. That's because your body is living in retrograde time. Mm. And speaking of time, uh, I know they talk about the Mayan uh, calendar 2012, but also the parasites have messed with time. They speak, they change the clocks and the calendars. So how do we know if we're, you know, right on target? Ah, but you see, again, whatever time, the Gregorian calendar is based upon a slave maintenance uh, paradigm. The Gregorian calendar essentially is is based upon commerce. It's based upon the European consciousness structure. Our time, we had like four or five different calendars. And the the long count calendar, the short count calendar, um, our calendars were based upon growing. Our our calendars were based upon uh, building a house. Our calendars were based upon specific time frame references with which um, how do you build a house and where do you position the the furniture and so forth. We had different calendars for every part of our lives. That's because the European keeps us in this one calendar that we have. For us to deal without that is to not 
use the calendar as our main reference for time. You have to get inside of yourself. What we teach is you have to become more knowledgeable of the time that the universe has set within you. Your clock is running on universal time inside of you, in your genetics. But they have you preoccupied with the time that they have now orchestrated based upon them getting you addicted to their time cycles when you have to have your coffee in the morning, when you got to get up to go to work, when you got to go to sleep, when you watch football, when you have sex. All of these are time references that they've placed on you. You have to examine from the time your foot hits the floor in the morning to the time you pick it back up to go back to bed at night, what have you done in that day that, that belonged to you? What time frame reference belonged to you? And someone also is saying in the chat room that um, that we are multidimensional, that we can be in different dimensions and time at the same time. Yes, that's true. But guess what? How do you access the next vibratory frequency of yourself to the next? You can't. We are multidimensional entities. All living forms are living on different dimensions. In fact, you are nothing more than a projection from one dimension into this dimension. So what it is is that you are a multidimensional creature, but again, you're in lockdown. Just imagine that you are in a jail cell. And what we see as white light on the pleasant spe on the present spectrum and the spin particle and the spin dynamics of the atom and the particle on this level, just imagine what light is. You know you know what white light really is, right? The, the, you can you can tell me what white light really is. It's broken down into seven colors. Well, just imagine that those seven colors are actually the bars of your prison. Ooh. And that you only see within that spectrum of consciousness. And that, therefore, you have to now resonate all the elements in your body, all the particles, all of the, all of the atoms have to spin at a faster rate. And they can't spin at a faster rate if you're over there chomping down McDonald's or you suck it down all kind of crap into your system. Every time you eat filth and garbage, you slow the rate of your dynamics. You slow the rate of your atomic and particle spin. And therefore, the more you slow that down, the lower your consciousness is, and you are never going to get into your multidimensionality. It's when you're purifying, when you're cleansing and you're eating the right foods and you're in a higher frame of mind that you begin to pick up any kind of reference to your multidimensionality. That's why people who are addicted to crack and drugs who have very high Neptune in their, in their, in their astrological signs like Pisces, these people are perfect candidates for addiction because they have this high-quality energy that Neptunian energy that wants them to see psychic things, and because they don't know how to reference it, their subconscious wants them to escape the body to actually interface with who they are so they get easily hooked on drugs. Wow. Now, uh, someone else is asking, well, they're saying that uh, we are seeing that the parasites are organized. Is there an opposition leader or group to fend them off? <laughs> I will not talk about that on this phone. Okay. All right. Okay. So, but now you're saying that um, individually we can get out of this prison. You just broke that down for us. Yes. It has to be something that you come to clarity with. There is an inventory that we must all do for ourselves. There is an inventory that we must take that will reveal to us just how bogged down we are in the illusion that they have created. And to do that, it takes a little while. But with, with perseverance, uh, with, with continued dedication, or live occasion towards that, you become more and more aware 
of who you are essentially. There is an essential self, and then there is this superficial self. You have been preoccupied. You have paid all your attention to the superficial self. You have fed the superficial self. You have aggrandized and, and entertained the superficial self all your life because that's exactly what they want you to do. They want you to be more entertained and intertrained about who you are. So your superficial self is all you know. The essential self has gone untapped. It has disconnected. And when you get back to understanding and understanding the essential self, then it begins. Otherwise, just telling you certain things like this, I can't tell you this within an hour like this. I can't tell you what to do in an hour. Each person is individual. I can give you an overview, but then it doesn't make sense because then, then we're dealing with what I call fast food. You know, it's like you want to get something to eat, let's go ahead and pass by the window and grab a Mickey D burger. That's the same kind of mentality that's got us so superficial today. Mm-hmm. And uh, some of these things are what you are teaching at your school. Exactly. We teach about now is, you see, metaphysics, most, most people back when I was 30 years ago, 35 years ago, when I began teaching it and hardly anybody was into it, uh, they thought it was just a bunch of hoodoo and this and that, and it was not. Metaphysics is a new language, a relanguaging. It's like ebonicizing or taking knowledge and giving knowledge uh, a whole new diagram of words. What you have been taught to describe is the material effects of your society and your life. So everything you have around you right now and everything you perceive of around you is the effects. What we do at our school is teach you the cause because the cause is invisible. It's only the effects that are visible. So everything in your life right now is an effect. It's the result of something. But most people are caught up in looking at the effects Just like you are caught up when you get sick, your doctor is caught up in the effects, which is not the cause. And he gives you drugs to deal with the effects, which never takes care of the cause. But your whole life is like that. Our whole life is like that. It's a preoccupation with effects, and what we teach at our school is how to recognize the cause, how to uh, re-envision, but how to access the invisible realm and define the invisible realm, give it a substantiality, thresh it out so that you can now see that there is always something behind the curtain, the wizard behind the curtain that's actually creating the effects. And that's what we do. We part the curtain or we lift the veil of Isis to show you how these effects come about. Um, we, I'm going to go to the line, telephone lines, and if you want to talk to Dr. Phil Valentine, the number is 347-215-8041, 347-215-8041. Uh, area code 347, you have a question or comment for Dr. Phil Valentine? Area code three four seven. Hello, good night. Yeah. Hi, good night. We good hear night. you. Hello. Yes, we hear oh. you. Oh, okay, okay. Good night, good night. Blessings to both of you. I just want to ask Dr. Valentine a question. Since most of us, so I can speak for myself, is behind on my diet. Is there another way I can circumvent this, like if I can, if I get into the practice of voodoo or some other spiritual practice, would that help me to defeat this beast and in and, and, and this way ascend and, you know, get out of this program since I'm behind on my diet? Well, to be behind on the diet is simply uh-huh. a choice. All yeah. things are based on choice. Mm-hmm. What you, what I would suggest is that you can call us at the 800 number mm-hmm. if you wish to join 
one of our programs. You know, just teach at the university metaphysics. Mm-hmm. I am also, as 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 our sister rec- uh, said to you earlier, I am a doctor of naturopathic medicine, mm-hmm. as is my wife, Dr. Nalani. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, my first thing before I was a metaphysician is that I was a doctor. I am a doctor. Okay. So we put people on specific programs, mm-hmm. help them, you know, with their dietary uh, challenges. We don't call it diseases. We call it challenges. Mm-hmm. And if you have a challenge with weight or if you have a challenge with eating or if you have a challenge with cancer, mm-hmm. we teach people how to heal themselves. We empower people. Mm-hmm. There are different stages to our programs. One is two weeks, another is four weeks, and you you actually are rendering your donations for the time that you be with us because we have people all around the world that's on our programs, and we can't go to them and they can't come to us. So we have a two-week program, a four-week program, an eight-week program, and what we call the Life Path, which is a four-month program. We also have a nine-month program for women who wish to be with us through their term of pregnancy. But we do it by way right now of the Internet, which we find is very good. And depending on how serious your problem is, mm-hmm. we would then give you the advice and how, you know, how much resources you have to put in or invest in your upliftment. Um, we would then work with you and uh, teach you what you need to do to never have to go and see a doctor, unless, of course, you know, God forbid, there's an accident or something, then, of course, you would want to go to what they do best, and that is to patch people up. But as far as healing is concerned, we deal with teaching that person how to heal. No longer are we going to make you dependent or should you be dependent on anyone for your own well-being. You are the one that is walking around. You are the driver of your own biological vehicle, so you should know the instrument that you are in this time, and that's what we're here to do, teach you that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, caller. Um, area code 804. Area code 804. Hello, uh, Beverly D., uh, Dr. Valentine? Yes. Yes, good evening. Uh, first of all, I want to say yes. Happy New Year to both of you, and this has been a very, very good lecture on your part, uh, Dr. Valentine. I'm, I've, I've been a fan for uh, the past several years after my son I realized that uh, all the things that I've been questions about, I, he pointed me to you, Bobby Hemet, and others of the consciousness movement. I have been a fan and a follower for a long time. Um, I want to uh, thank you for taking your time out to sh- share everything that you're sharing with us. This has been a very good uh, 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 lecture on your part and very, very informative. I was the one that was writing some of those questions in the room, and I want to apologize for putting you on the spot about opposition and whatnot. I, I should not have asked that in an open forum. Uh-huh. But uh, my question is this. I'm a 61-year-old, uh, 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 you know, uh, African-American male, for, for lack of another title. Uh, and I have noticed that over since I've been pursuing this thing called consciousness, I've been go- my, my body has been going through changes. Uh, uh, things like my appetite, uh, certain foods don't seem to do it for me anymore. Uh, uh, I want foods that are less, uh, let's say, like, you know, people are putting all kind of condiments and things on food. Uh, I don't want that stuff. Now, I seem to, to want more of what comes naturally. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been it's been hard. I, I don't go to the fast food restaurants anymore and whatnot, but the one thing that I, I found is that I don't know what to eat. Well, the first thing I would definitely suggest for you and everyone there, if I might, and I and I call upon the host uh, to to you know the, her good graces to allow me to introduce her kind audience to a product called Juice Plus. Juice Plus. I'm writing this down. Thank you. Okay. Now the product is called Juice Plus. You go up to the website Rethink Juice Plus. That's Re. Think juiceplus.com. Uh-huh. R E T H I N K J U I C E P L U S dot com. Now, yeah, let me just a very, very little quick thing on that. The reason why I tell people that is because we are not getting the enough fruits and vegetables 
so that we can get the concentrated benefits from it. Now they have found, after all this time that we have been trying to get people to eat fruits and vegetables over these last 35 years, a lot of my friends who have been driven out of the country, a lot of my friends who are dealing with cancer from nutrition were actually jailed. You know, I was threatened many times for thinking about uh, selling any kind of product that, uh, that claimed anything. It always came down on us. Now the Medical Association is finding out that the phytonutrients in fruits and vegetables have the power to uh, get rid of uh, or at least prevent cancers to reverse uh, certain pathological uh, conditions because of the concentrated nutrients. Now, these little things uh, contain at least a combination of 17 fruits, vegetables, and two grains. And these are getting in, in, in 98 to 99% potent. In other words, okay. when they have juiced these vegetables, and this is the other part of it, family, the vegetables and fruits that you buy in the store, they ship them green to you. But uh -huh. here's the, in other, in other words, they have to ship them green and they have to ripen on the way or they're in the store because then they would be damaged. What happens is fruits and vegetables do not get the maximum amount of nutrients unless they are vine ripened. If they are not vine ripened, then that last surge of nutrients right before the plant gives that, that uh, is picked. There's a point where the fruit and the vegetables get a last burst of energies where the, where the plant itself puts all of its energies into its fruits in order for it to be used by nature as well as to propagate itself. Well, at that moment, is when most of the nutrients are in, and that's when those who make the Juice Plus pick it, then they juice it within 24 hours, and then they air dry it in cool air dry. They do not destroy the enzymes. So you get 98 to 99% of the enzymes in a concentrated form, and you get 17 fruits, vegetables, and two grains. It's a combination, 17 fruits and vegetables with two grains, and that concentration is what's missing. And those are what it is that I've been giving to my people and with miraculous, uh, um, and I can't say it because you're not allowed to say it helps to do this, but right. I will say to you that there have been miraculous effects by people taking this Juice Plus. And I highly recommend that to your family that you go out and check that. And if you have any problems with it, please call us at the 800 number, 800 Eight four seven one two nine one, and then ask us about that Juice Plus. We'd be more than happy to let you know about it because it's been absolutely wonderful for us personally. Okay, thank you very much for that because it has been uh, a living hell. Uh, when I uh, I noticed that my body was almost rejecting uh, through like acid reflux and what have you the food yeah. I had normally been been eating on, and it's, my, it's like my body is telling me, mm -hmm. and I've been trying to listen to it. You, you're hurting yourself all yes. these years, mm -hmm. and now it's like my body can't take it anymore. And that's because your body is now moving into an area of the universe where your energies are being forced. Your, the spirals of, your, of, your, of the atoms, of your electrons, they're speeding up, and you mm -hmm. can't eat the kind of low-energy foods anymore because then your body will begin to reject it and then show you that it doesn't want it and it's going to make you suffer as a result. It's, it's happening right now. One last question, and I want to bo go guide the phone. I, I really enjoy talking with you. Uh, because of the, the increased energy that the sunlight puts into the fruits and vegetables right before they, they ripen and pick, mm -hmm. uh, I had heard, I don't know, it was, I think it was you who said that because of our DNA, that we actually, if we are living properly and eating properly, they're just like plants that we can draw energy from the sun. Yes, definitely. The sun is a nutrient giver. In fact, we, of course, have degenerated as humans, and now because of that degeneration, there are parts in our bodies, different organs in our bodies that we don't even realize are there because they've atrophied, they've shrunk. And because we have degenerated, we no longer have the power to absorb or to even use our melanin as a food source. 
as a source of nutrients for us to process the light of the sun into energy because that's what and that's what uh, melanin is melanin is a superconductor of energy and because of what we're eating because of what we're drinking because of what we're breathing we have shut down those superconductive capabilities that keeps us interfaced with the universe okay and that back we have to start cleansing our bodies cleansing our minds and putting in the proper nutrients to match the speed orientation of the new particle spin that okay. is happening. So I'm not the only one you're hearing this from, I gather. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's why we have our school. <laughs> right. Because, uh, you know, our, our young, our young um, students are out there spreading the word. Okay. All right. Thank you, caller. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. You're quite welcome. Now, uh, let's see. We're going to area code uh, 253. Do you have a question or comment for Dr. Valentine? Oh, yes. Uh, Peace and prosperity. Uh, I have a question. Uh, Concerning the placenta, uh, Doc, I've heard so many different things on it, but uh, as of late I've come to hear that the placenta is an essential part of our evolution as a people, especially the primordial people on this planet, and because we've been taught, and specifically uh, the quote-unquote black woman have been taught not to consume her placenta, she's missing out on not only nutrients but uh, specific evolution that's supposed to actually activate these certain chambers that lay dormant. Well, the, the, that, that old ritual and I wouldn't do it now because essentially the type of body that we have and the type of foods that they've been feeding us and so forth has not, does not have that uh, content of nutrition. What you're talking about is the consumption of the cord blood that had coagulated in the placenta. Well, that's essentially what they've been doing now, and it's a very good point you've built up and, and brought up, uh, the cord blood is what it is that they are storing now because the cord blood has these preliminary cells. I forgot what they call those cells. That, stem uh, cells. Stem cells, right. These preliminary cells or these pre-cells or what we call primordial cells, uh, they have the ability to create and to propagate brand new bodies, to renew the body so that when the black woman back then, when she was more in her divine state, when she consumed it, what it did was to rebuild her body, rebuild all of her insides and her infrastructure as if she didn't even have a baby. Wow. And when she consumed it, the nursing milk that she gave was of the highest quality, which is why when the French sent their, um, their uh, professors to study malnutrition over in Africa, they went to places where there was malnutrition, but because of the culture, they found that the babies there were at least three to five years in intellectual advancement over white European babies who were wow. supposedly well-fed. Now, what they found, and just to kind of put a little uh, cap on this, people, women, Mothers who were pregnant consuming the Juice Plus had over 100 billion cord blood cells as opposed to the regular 100 million that most of the uh, um, average mothers had. The concentration of cord blood, high energy, high uh, concentrations of stem cells and blood vessels and blood cells in the cord blood of those mothers who took that uh, Juice Plus, were off the scale. The babies wow. were born in uh, what they have, what they call the APGAR test, which is the way they, apt to, the way they, uh, uh, they react, the way they, they react to the touch, they react to uh, a prink, pin prick, the way they re- resist you or they push away from you, the way they cry and so forth. Yes. Babies who were on that Juice Plus scored in the nines and tens all the time which meant that there is a specific nutrients and nutrients that have been missing from mothers that this particular product and what just fruits and vegetables themselves 
are missing from that so that when we begin to rehabilitate our sister queens so that their cord blood begins to come back to that level, which is going to take some time because, remember, there are people out there that are fighting against those genetics actually revisiting themselves back to the human race. So, and yes, I, you're I, correct. I, but you, I would I suggest... I wanted to ask you... Yes, sir. Mm-hmm, go ahead. No, I just wanted to ask you also, uh, just real quick, because I know you ain't got much time, mm-hmm. is it possible that uh, also the cord blood, because they have also found that there is a multitude of hidden uh, stem cell inside of the placenta, but this is this is the kicker right here. Uh, the DNA that's in the placenta seems to be carried down from generation to generation as if, though, there's a hidden knowledge. You know, like uh, you, you see the animals eat their placenta, and yes. they know how to migrate and where to go, even though they've never been there. Supposedly, there's knowledge in the placenta for the primordial people of this planet, but if they don't consume it, they can't get access to that knowledge of generations before them. But, see, that's not necessarily for the human. It's for the animal. Okay, okay. The human themselves already have that. The woman passes that on in her mitochondria. The mitochondria of the black female is the Alexandrian library of humanity. Well, thank you, my brother. Thank you very much. Y'all have a peaceful and a prosperous day. You're thank quite you, welcome, Papa. beloved. Thank to you. Now, also, uh, Dr. Valentine, I've heard that apricot seed has a uh, healing to it, too. That I mean, I, mean we, I know we can't say uh, what they say we can't say, but it also has a uh, healing effect on cancer. Well, yeah, it, it's supposed to contain certain um, certain anti-cancerous materials, but anything that has a high oxygen level or has something that disturbs the cancer level that could, could return to that. Let me give you a secret. Let me give your family a secret. Mm-hmm. Cancer is nothing more than radical yeast. Mm. The very same properties in your body that feeds yeast feeds cancer. So like when women have yeast infection, uh, so you you just take things to get rid of. With a pseudo-cancerous condition. Mm. Okay. Now, I'm going to area code 604. You have a question or comment for Dr. Valentine? Uh, just a question. Okay. Should Go I ahead. speak? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Dr. F- uh, Valentine. I know it's off topic, but I've heard you speak on uh, reptilians before, and uh, I've been I've been attacked recently in my dreams. And um, I just wanted to get your input on that. I mean, like, how do I avoid being attacked by these um, reptilians in my dreams? Because I know they've been attacking me uh, through sex, weird, weird sex dreams. Well, we, that would be something that I would actually talk to you in a private consultation. But I would want you to also consider this. Um, the subconscious usually feeds back to us what we cannot process consciously in our waking states. So Mm -hmm. sometimes dreams are nothing more than the hieroglyphic reflections. Because remember, they come in the form of pictographic symbols. They don't come in the form of words. They come in the form of pictures and feelings and emotions that those pictures give to us while we're in the sleep state. What happens is, If we have certain conscious situations where we do not feel like we're in control or if we do not feel as if certain things are righted before we close our eyes to go to sleep, we bring that problem to be solved in our unconscious state. And what then the unconscious does is it does what it does. It begins to communicate to us the way it communicates, and that's with pictures. The conscious mind communicates with words. 
The subconscious mind communicates with pictures. If the words have not been satisfactorily uh, uh, connected to give you a symmetry of peace or a symmetry of reasoning and logic, then you bring that back to you when you go to sleep. And the symmetry and the ability to try to bring the logic and symmetry back to you comes in the form of pictures that represent the confusion that you are having in your conscious state. Oh, I understand. Thank you very much, Dr. Phil. You're quite welcome, beloved. Thank you, Carla. Okay, Dr. Uh, Valentine, we have about 15 more minutes, and so I want you to give out your information again to the uh, public. Thank you. I'd be more than happy to. Um, the, if you want to join our university or if you wish to have a consultation, if you know of anyone that uh, would like to spend time with us uh, and to uh, invest their resources in getting their health together or invest their resources or to invest your resources in building your knowledge of self as well as for consciousness, we do give certification at our university. It's not just to teach, but if you wish to be certified in a metaphysical psychology and classical naturopathy under the University of Commission Sciences. You can't go out and get a job with it because we're not teaching you to get a job. We're teaching you to teach the planet, to uplift the planet. Um, if you were looking to uh, um, get uh, Juice Plus uh, so that you can bring that as part of your paradigm, we have it for, we also give it free if you do come on and get the Juice Plus. I just want to say this. If one, if a parent, one parent, uh, does uh, purchase the Juice Plus, we can put them on the child health study, and if the child is four years of age or over, we will give them free Juice Plus for three years. Hmm. So yes, we are doing this, and the company is doing this in order to enhance the healing index in this planet, and they're doing their best. They're bending over backwards. So. Uh, that's the other thing. If you if you're willing to join us in this incredible journey uh, that we are about to actually not the end of time is coming up, but the beginning of the new paradigm, uh, please uh, give us a call at eight hundred one eight hundred eight four seven one two nine one, and uh, we would be more than happy to have you. We are beginning our next semester uh, for the university in February. Uh, in so-called Black History Month, but uh, that's uh, that's another misnomer. But uh, we are uh, starting then. And uh, for those of you in New York, I'm hoping to be coming back to New York to do part two of our uh, Hidden Colors. I don't know if anybody has seen the movie documentary Hidden Colors, but I was just talking to the producer, Tariq, and uh, Brother Tariq uh, said to us that he wants to do part two at the Apollo Theater. So we're hoping that uh, that comes about in the first part of February. And for those of you out on the West Coast, at the end of February, I am hoping to be in Seattle, where we're going to be doing an African uh, history uh, with myself and uh, Brother Kaba Hiawatha. And uh, we're going to be out there there for you brothers and sisters in Seattle. Uh, but if, again, you would wish to participate with us, again, the number is 800-1800-847-1291. Well, um, thank you so much, Dr. Valentine. <clears throat> and before I let you go, uh, what do you think that we need to be doing uh, in 2012? Well, 2012 is preparation time, and this is the time for everyone to make the commitment. This is a commitment time. There's no if or ands, there's no this or that. There is what it is and what you have dedicated your mind and your heart to at this very moment. Do not fall for the hype. They are about to get dictatorial like you will not believe. But just remember, Right before Christmas, when Christmas was in, over one million guns were sold in this country. So things are beginning to change. They're getting ready to be stepped up. They brought back over 45,000 soldiers. 
They didn't just bring them back because they love the soldiers. They brought them back because they're going to need them in a country that is primed for unrest, primed for civil war. Now we're going to be seeing whether or not Obama is going to fulfill his pledge because last year he was supposed to make a, um, an announcement of the extraterrestrials who have been here over the last thousand years, but he was told not to or else his family would have been killed. So now what happens is we have to see whether or not he will fulfill what is supposed to be part of his own destiny and be the revelator, one who comes forward and tells the world that we have and there are people here that have been amongst us from other planets or we are being visited from other planets and that the, uh, the Galactic Federation which essentially is hovering just off of Saturn in a moon-like ship that a friend of ours named Raleigh Martin had visited. And he himself, if you know about Raleigh Martin, he was one of the first ones to speak about what it is that Steven Spielberg took his little book and memos and the ending part of Close Encounters of the Third Kind was taken directly from Raleigh Martin's book. So this is getting ready to happen. So I would just recommend to people to get your health together don't believe the hype don't go don't kowtow to fear don't open your heart to fear to become empowered by the fact that you are a god and that everything you're living right now is an illusion it's a projection it's participation in a temporary space for you to become more knowledgeable of the god self within you and to enjoy your life, to enjoy your family. Tell your family and everyone around them how much you love them. Always tell your family how much you love them. Always speak of love to the people that are dearest to you. Men, start stepping up. Young men who's listened to me, step up and become fathers, real fathers. Man up, as they say, to become real fathers, especially and good husbands, good men for your women. Sisters, time for you to step back. You don't need to be working as hard, even though they're telling you to. You're not independent, and there's no such thing as feminism. That was Rockefeller-funded, CIA-backed. That's not real. It's time for us to find the germ, to find the center, to find, to find the core and the vortex of the family once again, because that's the power they fear. When the people begin to deal with the archetypal, instinctive, intuitive selves, the, the parasitic elite fear that because that's the empowerment. And I say that, find yourself within, know thyself. And 2012 will be a time to celebrate, even through all the madness that we're about to face. Well, thank you, Dr. Valentine. It's always a pleasure. You always give us the needed knowledge, and we truly, truly appreciate you, and I thank you. And I thank you for the opportunity and the invitation. Peace and much love. Hotel. Hotel. Well, until next time, um, peace and love. Stay strong. Poverty stricken is life that we live in. They promise us prison. That's why we robbing and killing. Trying to vision a life away from this hood. Get millions, but I feel it because I live in these times. Witness these crimes. The government get cracked to the hood. They give us time. See the truth is they lying to kick it. Been on a mission. Generations of black die. Let's make a decision. It's time for a change. I'm talking to the man in the mirror. Trying to keep my people blind to the fact the truth is getting nearer. They murdered all my black leaders, keep us hating on each other That's the way that they defeat us, if we all came together No way that they can beat us, yeah we built this whole country But they act like they don't need us I'm like the Negro in the big hat Mr. Garvey had the right idea, I'm feeling that And it can't stay the same Like Michael Jackson said, it's time to make a change Shit is shy cause the system ain't changing up
opportunity to cop. I think it changes the only way we can make it stop. Change up our grandma motors and get up off the block. Stop all that running and turn your fucking block on the cop who feel like he can choke any nigga until his breathing stop. See how I changed up the message in like a millisecond. And now we got the cops running the opposite direction. Who says it's right? I don't know. I'm just going with the flow. Somebody screaming riot. I'm screaming Molotov at the flow. Get up and go to a place that you feel is truly safe. Whoever thought that the church could detonate in your face. It sounds horrific, but damn, the outcome is so terrific. This is a life, it ain't revelation. Don't get it twisted. Leaving all the competition in the dust. dust, dust, dust.